Hey guys, I got Level here, and today I'm gonna be giving you five tips to improve your microphone's audio. Now, what kind of tips are we talking about? Basically, it's gonna be good practices on how to get the most out of whatever microphone you are currently using. This is not a video where I'm going to compare different microphones telling you which one to buy. I have many videos on that already. The best microphone to use for live streaming right now is the one that you already own. And if you don't own any, well, the ones that you're gonna eventually buy. Now, some of those tips might seem obvious to some of you, but please keep in mind that I'm making those videos for the general audience and I've been on Twitch and I've seen people not apply those tips. So first of all, we need to establish what is considered decent audio for a live stream, for a Twitch stream. Well, the good news is that the bar is not too high. We don't need studio quality. We don't need high music recording uh, quality to have a decent audio on Twitch. To be honest, most streamers, in order to not have the stream be awkward when they pause, will have some music playing in the background or you will have in-game sound. So things like the perfect noise microphone is pretty much not required. One thing that you also need to know is that good audio means good conditions. If you've seen a recording booth, you will realize that it is completely made to sound great. If you could simply buy an expensive microphone and have the perfect sound, then recording booth will just be normal living rooms. So wherever you're streaming from, take a look around. Is there a fan that produces noise? Do you have children screaming in the background? Do you have pets that make noise? Where is your gaming computer? Is it connected? Connected to your desk? Is it producing vibrations that are going to be transferred through your desk into your microphone? Do you live at an intersection just like me and you have to close your windows when you're live streaming? The truth is there are no children, pets, traffic canceling microphones. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we haven't even started with the tips yet. So the first tip is avoid saturation at all costs. Luckily for you, I have a tip that could apply to pretty much every microphone. As soon as you get it, this is the first thing you should absolutely be doing. So here I'm on uh, my Windows 10 machine. I'm gonna click, right click here, go to sound settings, and then sound settings here. We're gonna scroll down into input, pick your microphone, click device properties, and this is where the magic happens, basically. Most of microphones, this is the source of their saturation. If the original input volume is at 100%, it's usually way too much. Now I have mine at 54, but usually the sweet spot is like 75, 80. So if you bought an expensive microphone and for some reason it's still saturating, this might be the issue, okay? You can always add some more volume inside your broadcasting software, but this is usually the cause of most people saturating on Twitch. Why do we avoid the saturation? Because honestly, even if you're the best entertainer on the planet as soon as you start saturating it makes your stream very very difficult to keep on watching and over and over again if i'm wearing a headset it's gonna literally hurt my ears now that being said you've probably seen people like xqc or tyler one use saturation for comedy but if you're an upcoming streamer that is not something that you can allow yourself to do you can't drive your three viewers away by screaming in their ears okay tip number two is going to be the actual setup what kind of setup do you have for your microphone and this is basically where we're going to try to avoid vibrations. <laughs> now we were avoid saturation, avoid vibrations. For example, I have my mic on a desk arm, but without a shock mount. And that actually reduces quite a bit of vibration. It's not sitting on the desk. If your mic is sitting on the desk, for example, that means it's going to absorb every single vibration that's coming from that desk. So if your computer is part of that desk, just your fan are going to produce a humming sound that's going to be heard through the microphone. If you are playing a game and you're slamming your mouse because you're moving really fast or if you're even having a normal keyboard it will sound really really loud through your mic because well that's what a mic is it takes vibration and it transfers it to your viewers ears <laughs> so my tip for people who have their mics sitting on their desk put an old t-shirt underneath it. If you have some foam, anything that can dampen the, the vibration from the desk to the mic, put that underneath it and you will see a large improvement. Basically all the low frequencies, the bass that you're getting from your mechanical keyboard, that was a weird bug, that is going to decrease considerably. And for people who already have a scissor arm, but they're still struggling with vibrations, I recommend you getting a shock mount. Basically, shock mount is basically something that's going to put your mic in between a bunch of rubber bands so that vibrations don't get to it, directly at least. Now, keep in mind that I mentioned low frequencies. Do not confuse your mic picking up the sound of your keyboard versus vibrations from the sound of your keyboard going 
going through your desk into your mic. This is why I said low frequency is going to be very, very low. Listen to your VOD and figure that out. That being said, I do have a tip for that later. And when I said later, apparently I meant right now. Tip number three get close to your mic as close as possible microphones are made to be spoken into they're not made to be standing half across the room and magically pick up all the different frequencies coming from your voice you can get away with having the mic on the side but you're really not gonna sound as good as your mic is capable of making you sound now of course we have the huge problem once you get close to your mic all the air coming from your mouth is gonna hit the mic and this is why you need something like a pop filter it's literally called a pop filter because if you're saying Peter Parker is going to it's going to hit the mic and produce a very very loud sound. I stopped using a pop filter because it was huge and I started using a mic beanie. I still don't know the real name for that thing, but I love calling it a mic beanie. And the mic beanie serves the exact same purpose. Of course, the sound is going to be a little bit more muffled, but it's worth it because I can get really close to the mic without having a huge disc like that of a pop filter. So you decide which one you want to choose. Now, of course, if you have neither of those, you just got to place the mic at an angle where your mouth is not directly talking into it, but it's going to pick up most of the frequencies. Because but if I start speaking like that, if I had my mic on this side like that, um, I wouldn't need a pop filter because technically the air is not hitting the mic from my mouth. But please, please get close to your microphone. Most people who send me messages asking me why they mic sound so bad, even though they spent $500 on it, turns out they're standing this at this distance from their microphone and they're like, I don't get it. Now, if you stand far from your microphone, you're gonna have to boost your gain. You're gonna have to have a, a maximum volume as possible. And guess what? If you're that distance from the mic, your keyboard is also the same distance from the, your keyboard is actually closer to the mic than you are. <laughs> Basically, all that to say that it's gonna pick up even more background noise if you are away from it. Now, if you have a level for you being close to the mic, guess what? Everything else is gonna be super low. Why? Because everything else is so far away from the mic compared to the level that you put it. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have to explain that. Like, I, I, I'm... I'm pretty sure I made myself clear there. Just get close to your mic, okay? And if you're one of those people who are like, I don't want to have my mic in frame, well, you're gonna struggle with audio. You're not gonna have the best audio. Do not expect to have better audio than people who have the mic right in front of them because that's not how mics work. If you're not speaking into it, you're not gonna have the best sound. It should be logical, but hey. Oh, I forgot something for, from step two. I totally forgot. Uh, if you're using a mic arm, you can also add a little bit of foam where it clamps to the desk in order to reduce vibrations. Okay, step four, filters. In your broadcasting software using OBS or Streamlabs OBS, you have filters to your audio source. Now, you need to know what those filters are. I will probably make a separate video explaining what they are and what they do. But basically, the most important filters are the noise gate. That means when you stop speaking, it stops picking up everything that's going on in your room. So if I stop talking, it goes completely silent, okay? So that's that's quite important. A compressor, basically a compressor can save your life. Basically, if you start screaming out of nowhere, a compressor can pretty much limit how high and how loud you're going to sound. So even if you have a mic that does saturate, at least the compressor will prevent it from being saturated and also super loud. And then of course you have a noise reducer, noise suppressor, I don't know what it's called. Basically what it is, is that if your mic has original, original, originally like some, some noise, in it basically if you have the sound it can help reduce that and then of course the gain filter can help you if as i said you lowered your volume and now it's it's too low you can bump up the volume inside your broadcasting software not in windows all right tip number five which is the last one is the way you speak okay uh if you guys watch my show stream review every friday 9 p.m ct on twitch you'll hear me tell people that they need to learn how to speak better <laughs> no that's not really what i say but what i say is stop mumbling if you're mumbling people are gonna have a hard time understanding you it's crazy that i have to say it but hey here we go uh <laughs> if you mumble we're gonna have a hard time understanding you uh you're gonna sound bored and if you sound bored us, the viewers, we're going to be bored. So learn how to speak in a way that is more capt captivating or at least understandable. You know, I used to say be loud, be clear. But now I say you don't have to be loud, but at least you have to be clear. I can I can literally whisper, but still articulate every single word. And you understand everything that I say, even with my weird accent. English is 
even my first language. <laughs> so there's no reason for you to not only not be close to the mic, but on top of that, you're mumbling and whispering. How the hell are we supposed to understand what you're saying? Why would we sit down and watch that for three hours? There's a reason why if you watch any TV show, any talk show, any like the news or whatever, uh, the newscasters aren't like, yeah, um, the weather is pretty nice tomorrow, you know? We can expect some uh, low temperatures on this spot, and then uh, as usual, it's gonna be hot in this part of this. There's a reason why they're all sitting straight and they're talking, ladies and gentlemen, you know? So watch your VODs and ask yourself, how can I improve my speech? Because speaking in a way that people can understand you is like the first step, it's basic of human communication. But I have to teach that somehow. <laughs> Because if you go down on, on like those zero to three viewers, Twitch streamer, you'll you'll know exactly what I mean. We're not even going to go and talk about how you can improve your attitude overall on stream. But anyways, those were my five audio tips. I'm tired of hearing people with expensive microphones sounding like garbage. <laughs> and I'm tired of hearing people with cheap microphone saving up to buy more expensive microphones when they don't know how to use even the cheap ones. Talking about cheap ones, if you're in the market for some microphones, I have multiple videos on that check out my channel and if you're wondering what microphone i am using and what setup i'm using you can also find that on my channel so just look at my channel please but that's it that was supposed to be a tips and tricks happy video but it ended up being a rent <laughs> i recently put out a brand new animated overlay pack before halloween okay i'm also working on that don't worry so you can check it out at gumroad.com slash get level if you haven't started using streamlabs obs yet uh, link in the description if you want to know what camera what lights that i use what mic that i use link in the description if you want to join my Discord, if you have questions about being a streamer or whatever problems that you're experiencing, we are 300 and plus live streamers in that Discord. Link in the description. And if you want to get your stream reviewed, stop by my Twitch, twitch.tv slash get level every Friday, 9 p.m. CT, except next Friday. There's not going to be one next Friday. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, any recommendations, any corrections, uh, any tips of your own, Please leave them in the comment section below. I will see you guys next time. Go out there. Make me proud. Again, level. Out. I got so many tears and I'm trying to hide. You feel the vibe, give comfortable. Be original and stay humble. And if you stumble, just plug in your bubble. Put some tonic in your gloves and get ready to rumble.